Anybody prepared to come and throw those three darts? Final of the World's Darts Championship, 23 to get. Edward? Well done. Checked out brilliantly. Getting slightly bigger now. Check out target is 52. Think in your head before you come up. What are you going to do? How are you going to finish on a double? Ben, would you like to come and have a go? 20. Left him with 12. What's he going to do? What could he do? Well done, Ben. Since setting up a darts club at Woodland Middle School, head of year six, Philip New, has been inspired to draw on the sport within his classroom practice. Within the darts club itself, um, I've definitely seen a change in all the children in their attitude towards mathematics, um, their ability within mathematics. I then realised that we could take what was being done in the club into the classroom through various ways. Mental calculation, looking at methods of subtraction, understanding doubles, understanding trebles, times tables through the dartboard, endless things, endless. Uh, year six, today's objective is to develop mental calculation skills, looking specifically at addition and subtraction. And today we're gonna to do it through the dartboard. Now, what I'm gonna do is just talk about the structure of the dartboard and how it's made up. Now, the outer ring, is the double ring. So any dart that's thrown within this section doubles the value of the number on the outside of the board. In the inner ring, we call it the treble ring, so that then is treble the number you see on the outside of the dartboard. Here we have 25 and then obviously the bullseye. Okay? So let's imagine that the dart's going to land, let's say, treble 17. Let's not think about the answer, but what the method could B. Anybody prepared to give me an explanation of how we could work out treble 17? Um, times 10 by 3 and then times 7 by 3 and then add them together. So let's have the answer for 10 times 3, Alex. 30. And 7 times 3? 21. And then you're going to do what with those two numbers? Add them together. And it's going to give you a total of? 51. Excellent, well done. OK, imagine the dart landed here in the double 18 section. What would that be? Rebecca? 36. How did you do that? I doubled 8 and I doubled 10 and then I added them all together. So you partitioned it. So you've gone. Asking the children how they did it is an important one because we're, we're constantly listening to new ideas based on what the children are sharing with each other. So it helps for them to develop their own understanding. Adapting the dartboard allows Philip to tailor lessons according to objective, ability and time available. This is a new dartboard I've designed. Yeah. And we've got the numbers 8, 11, Here, 4... Here, he's one, used a smaller seven, range of 10, numbers three, to limit five, possible nine, dart combinations two, and scores. Six. Still got the double ring, still got the treble ring. Your job is to find all the possible one dart scores and two dart scores but also work out which scores are not possible. And I want to hear you talking about the possible dart scores, and I also want to hear you thinking about, and hear you talking about, how are you going to record your answers? Um, I'm going to put one dart, and then I'm going to put like triple, and then double, and then I'm going to... So you're going to do like a list, yeah. you're going to list yeah. it. So that's what Stephen's going to do. Has anybody thought about writing on the dartboard? And I wonder why that would be a good idea. Jake? Uh, so you know which ones you've done. So you know which ones you've done. Brilliant, well done. OK, year six, you've got ten minutes. Let's go. Imagine a dart landed here and here, here and here. What would that be? If they hadn't been given enough direction, it would have been very easy for them just to just start throwing any numbers down. They needed to be given the idea that we needed some type of order and structure to systematically record the data. Now we've looked at single scores. Anybody got any other two dart scores we could use? Any two dart scores? Where imagine that two dart score could be a double nine and a one. So what could that be? Leah. Nineteen. Nineteen. Good girl. So that's a possible two dart score. Brilliant. Let's get going. Come on then. 
Okay. The possibility of cross-curricular is for the children to write instructions for a dart game. They could compose their own dartboard game and write out rules, guides, perhaps annotate it with drawings. Um, so there's, you're bringing in art and design, you're bringing in English, you're bringing in writing, reading, and also speaking and listening, you know, when they're working in teams to perhaps create a new dart game. Has anybody worked out the biggest possible two dart score? Triple 12 and triple 11. Triple 12, triple 11. I th treble. I think there's a bigger one than treble 12 and treble 11. Triple 12 and triple 12. Okay, why did you know that automatically, that treble 12 and treble 12 was going to give you the biggest possible score? What was the reason? It's the biggest number on yeah, the dartboard. 12 is the biggest number on the new dartboard. Brilliant. I think it's also a good idea to listen to the children, to, to let them to come up perhaps or just share and evaluate what they've done, what worked for them. Uh, and ask them personally what would they like to see happen next with the investigation and uh, where would they like to take it themselves. I think that's always a good idea and it helps me, the teacher, plan for the future. Today, a special guest is visiting the dance club. A legendary figure in the world of professional dance, this man's words inspired Philip to set up the club in the first place. Yeah, push. And teacher. <laughs> Jack? Um, how has maths been important to you in the past when you've been playing darts? Well, if you're going to be a professional dart player, you must learn to count on the dartboard. It's not just counting on the dartboard, it's counting with the combinations and the biggest target you've got. And all the combinations on the dartboard, the more times you do it, the more times you remember, it comes automatically. It's a combination of memory, all mass is memory of combinations. And it does help you in all walks of life. A treble, a single and a double on a dartboard is called a Shanghai. Okay? So, what guy, I want you guys, what does that add up? Treble one, single one, double one. What's it add up? Six. Six. It's easy, that one. Okay. So now we go on twos. Shanghai and twos. Treble, single, double. Twelve. Right. So, that's easy. So, on ones is six. On twos is twelve. So, we go on threes. What is Shanghai on threes? 18. 18. You just add six, because it's a combination of six. What's your best achievement you've um, made in darts? When I first represented England, I think in any sport, to represent your country is the best thing you can do. I won tournaments, but that's for myself. But when you're picked for your country, it's a great feeling. And okay. um, were you only good at maths at school? Um, I can't remember that far back, Jack, to be honest with you. Um, I was average, average. I didn't start playing darts till I was only 28 years old. When you're playing the game, you don't realise that you're learning combinations and counting. So it helped me without me really knowing. But I wish I'd done what you were doing today, playing darts at school. I'd have loved that and probably been a better counter. The main idea for the darts club came from watching the World Darts Championship um, and then Bobby was asked the question of where does the future of darts lie and he said well in the school a light bulb switched on I thought well I can do this. Some children have, have really excelled within their mental calculation skills and it's lucky because two of the boys in the darts team are in my maths class weren't very willing to offer answers but now they're constantly firing out the answers and I think a lot of it is down to what they've experienced in the darts club. Use your arm not your body that's it. Now that's the way to do it. <laughs> what I'd now like you to do, Year 6, is when I ask you to, I'd like you to roll the dice two times. And I'd like you to, Scott, put the numbers in any way you like. So if, let's say you get 
five and six. You could make 56 or 65. And what I want you to do is at the top of your page, I want you to write that number that you've made. And then I want you to imagine, Joe, that you've got three darts. And you've got to check out on your last dart. I think if we can offer children as much as many opportunities as we can, such as the interactive whiteboard, actually physically having a dartboard on the table, using a laptop to consolidate and extend their understanding of mental calculation skills, just maintains their interest and makes the enthusiasm levels constant. Physically be able to interact with something works quite well, and only short activities work a lot better as well. OK, Year 6, let's roll these dice. How are you going to do that on the dartboard? You could do two and two and double ten. How many did you do that I'm on my second one. How did you reach 44? Wait, I've done a four and then I did a double ten and then I did another double ten to make 44. When it, when it came to the children rolling a dice two times to create their own dart number, you know, check out target, um, I think if we'd have had the opportunity to allow the children to roll the dice uh, two times, but this time having a one in front of the number, so to create a three digit number, that would have extended their thinking a little bit more and made things a little bit trickier because there may have been occasions where they couldn't check out based on their first dart thrown. Okay, now year six we're going to look at check out target but by using a computer program which is going to put you and your partner to the test. It's going to give you a check out target, remember three darts only, your last dart must be the double or who can remember? What else has it got to be? Jade? Bullseye. Good girl, well done. Um, double you could do double fifteen. Then a twenty. Then a double ten. I think it's been good to increase children's ability to communicate with one another um, because there are children there who are willing and quite able double to help ten. each other just through their explanations of how they could check out using the dartboard. I think that you could create a darts lesson like this at any time when you can see that you've got an objective and you know think could I match that through a subject like darts you know be it problem solving be it investigating be it data handling perhaps Although the current club members are all boys there are encouraging signs in the classroom that the girls are also getting a taste for darts Using something like darts, you know, it, it just brings a new dimension to your teaching. It's nice to see the children smiling and enjoying what they're doing and, you know, interacting with the dartboards, as I've said. It's definitely a good thing. So I'd just like to say to all the schools that are going to play darts, may the darts be with you. Lovely jubbly. <laughs>